everybody welcome back to our channel today i want to do a full a final review on the matacoops incubator we've successfully finished hatching out our first batch of chicks uh, so i just want to go over some pros some cons what i like about it what i don't like about it and uh, hopefully it will inform you if you are looking to purchase uh, this incubator for yourself okay so the first feature we're going to talk about is the display screen um, it is easy to read it's got your temp, your humidity, how many days left until hatch. Uh, it tells you if your egg turner is rotating. Now, it, uh, it's defaulted to chickens. However, you can change your temperature as well as the number of days for your eggs so that you can add uh, quail, uh, duck, turkey, whatever kind of eggs you want to add in here, you can change those settings. It also has some easy to read instructions that are right there on that side panel. Um, so just quick instructions like setting your temperature, uh, changing the hatch days, uh, testing your egg turner. So overall, it's very user friendly, very easy to see and understand how to use it. Okay, so the second feature, it kind of ties in with the first with the display screen and the panel is your egg turner. This egg turner I've been very pleased with. I was very skeptical about it to begin with. I wasn't sure about the brightness of it with brown eggs, uh, but it did fantastic. I could see what was happening. Everything uh, was very visible inside the egg um, when I was candling it early on. No problems with this egg uh, candler whatsoever. Super wonderful feature to have built in right on top. Now that being said, there is a con to the egg candler. Unfortunately, it has a setting to time out and turn itself off after a few minutes, which gets very annoying while you're trying to candle your eggs. So the lid itself, is fantastic you can see what's going on all of your electronics up here it does get in the way of seeing the chicks fully um, but overall it's, it's still very easy to look in there and see what's going on with them all right now let's take the lid off of here set it to the side uh, real quick before we get rid of it uh, here is your probe for the thermometer so you want to be careful with that uh, and this is your humidity sensor as far as uh, I can tell and if you get water on this when you plug it up you're gonna get an error code so make sure you do not get that wet uh, and if you do let it dry out before you plug it in hmm. power just went out okay so the next feature we're going to talk about are the egg trays these turn your eggs once an hour. Uh, there's some pros and cons to the tray, so let's get into that a little bit. So the first pro is by using the plus button on top of your um, incubator, you can actually test these trays and they'll move back and forth. And when you push that button and it's moving, when they get into an upright position, you can push it again and they'll stop moving so that you can put eggs in and out of there without trying to do it at an angle or that you can take the trays out and set them back in without having to line it up uh, with these little slots too much. So that's a, that's a pro, nice little feature um, there. These egg trays do stop turning on day 18. So when you have three days left before hatch, they'll stop turning so that you don't turn your eggs too much. Um, it says it's a reminder to take the egg trays out and put the eggs down in the bottom there. But, I mean, really, are you going to notice the egg turner has stopped turning once an hour? Probably not. Um, the next thing is the rail over here. This rail removes, so you can take it out and clean it once your eggs have hatched. Uh, and it also, by leaving it in there, um, that will help prevent stuff from getting down in that groove and help keep it a little bit cleaner, less to deal with when you're trying to clean up. And even though these egg turners are round on the bottom, they have little feet, so you can sit it directly on the table without your eggs turning over. Now, a con with these trays, which is it's kind of a kind of a pro, and it's kind of a con. It depends on which way you're looking at it. Uh, there are no dividers in this tray, so if you're putting your eggs in here sideways, no problem. But if you're putting them vertical, there's nothing to keep them from falling over. And so if you take one out to candle it. And put it on the candler these others 
have the potential of falling over, knocking against themselves, cracking. You just have to be really careful with it. Now, the, the plus side to that is you don't have any dividers that are set for a specific egg, so you're able to put eggs of different sizes in here, uh, which may um, give you the ability to put larger eggs or smaller eggs in here without wasting space. So it's kind of a pro in some respects and then in some ways it's not. So just be careful with your eggs when you're moving this around if you don't have this completely full. Okay, so it does come with an instruction book. Uh, so this will give you pretty much any, any details that you need to know. Uh, anything that I haven't covered in any of my videos, uh, you can go through here and, and probably find it. So let's move on to what everyone wants to know about temperature and humidity. Now, I did not put a, another thermometer in here. I did not put another hygrometer in here to test the temperature's accuracy or the humidity's accuracy. How would I know which one was correct? Unless I bought an expensive certified thermometer or hygrometer, if I put one in there, I, I won't know which one is right. This is what I will tell you. I never saw the temperature fluctuate from 99.5 unless I opened the incubator. This uh, advertises a stable temp um, technology. Basically an induction fan is going to suck up your cold air and blow out your heat and just keep it circulated. It does a fantastic job. So the humidity was really steady as well. Now humidity is a little different than your temperature, right? You have to have an exact temperature. You do not have to have an exact humidity. You need a range in your humidity. So uh, in the ranges that I was working with, this held exactly what I wanted. Uh, it's really easy to adjust. There's a, a couple of ways here. One, you've got your water wells uh, inside of here. There are two wells. Well number one, fills up the center part here. So it's just a small area. That's enough water to get that 55 to 60 um, on your humidity. And so that's all you're really filling up. Now, the second well, which you remove the stopper to get to, that fills this whole entire area here. So everything else here is filled by well two. You're only gonna use that the last three days and you're just gonna fill that up. And again, that gets you exactly that, that humidity that you want. You will need to adjust it by using this little window here on the front. And all you do is open it and close it. I found that for the first 18 days, I wanted a 55 degree to 60 degree humidity. Um, and all I did was have it about halfway. That was perfect for me and my environment. Now the cons, which really is only one. Uh, and that is once you have your egg turners in this incubator and everything is in place, it is very hard to tell how much water is in this well. So you just have to kind of go by the level on the outside. And if you, if you look, once you have it filled up, this will be, you know, full out here as well. Uh, so that only really is a problem if you have it on maybe a slightly uneven surface. You don't know exactly if you've overfilled it or not. For anyone who is wondering, this takes about half a cup of water to fill up. The rest of this takes about three cups to fill up. I would probably just stick with about two cups though for this second well. Okay, so cleaning, not bad at all. Uh, there's a few things to be mindful of, but overall, uh, it's easy to get everything. The bottom uh, screen comes out, the egg turner rail comes out, the trays come out. Um, it's easy to get to everything. So uh, a couple of things to be mindful of. You don't want to submerge this base. It has an electric motor for the turner, which is right here underneath this cover. Uh, pretty easy to get to, uh, two screws takes this cover off, two screws take off the motor. I've toyed with the idea of taking that off because if you take it off, really, you can just put this whole thing in the dishwasher. Um, my suggestion to the manufacturer, mount this motor and this cover together and have it attached with some thumb screws. That way you can just take it off, put it in the dishwasher, clean everything. 
my only problem with taking that off though is this plastic. I don't know how durable that's going to be to take screws in and out of. It's just not made for that. So I did it and I put a little beefier screws in there than came in it. Um, but I would I would think that eventually it's going to be hard for that cover to go back on. So I probably won't make it a habit of taking that off. The instructions say wipe it down with a, with a wet rag. Who's going to get that clean with a wet rag? I mean, have you ever hatched chicks? Uh, what I did was I sprayed it all out and I kept it with this at the bottom. That way if water did get inside of here, it's going to drip down away from your motor. That's where your motor is. So it's going to drip here and it's not going to get your motor wet. Um, so just be mindful of that. But uh, I cleaned this with a vinegar solution to make sure it killed all the bacteria. And um, all that worked out fine. So the other part of cleaning it is the lid. Uh, you're going to get stuff stuck all to the outside of here. You're going to have to wash this out. You cannot get your electronics wet. If you get your humidity sensor wet, uh, you're going to get an error code. Uh, you, you get any of this wet and then you plug it up, you're probably going to burn something out. So you make sure you don't get any of this wet. All I did with this is I took a sponge, a Brillo pad, I just cleaned it all up around here and then I just sprayed it out around the edge so nothing, I never put any water above it as I was rinsing it and I just gently rinsed all of this out. Um, so you, that is something you have to be careful about. I also have to say this. I set my incubator up the day before so that everything would be warm and the humidity would be right, everything would be stable. But really what I found with this incubator, you could pretty much turn this on and within 30 minutes or less, you're up to temperature, your humidity is good, and you're ready to put eggs in there. So final review. Features are fantastic. The cons are few and minor. But we got to let the result speak for itself, right? So day one, I put 12 eggs in this incubator. After one week, I candled them. I found out one was infertile. Doesn't matter how good an incubator is, it's not going to hatch an infertile egg. So that one came out. They gave us 11 eggs left in the incubator. I have 11 chicks in my brooder box. So it hatched out at a 100% hatch rate with this incubator. This incubator definitely delivers. If I had to order another incubator tonight, I would order this one, the Matacoops Digital Incubator. So five stars, two thumbs up on the Matacoops Incubator. Fantastic incubator. I would recommend it to a friend or family member in a heartbeat. You guys do with it what you will, but that's my review and that's my recommendation, the Matacoops Digital Incubator. If you're interested in seeing the hatch process that I went through, I've got all that documented. Check out the playlist at the end of this video and it'll take you through from unboxing all the way through hatch day and you can see the steps, you can see what happened uh, each step along the way. And remember to like and subscribe, turn on notifications so that you can follow us on what we're doing next on our Suburban Homestead. We'd love to have you join us. We'll see you next time.